Folks, welcome back. Well, it's an interesting day in politics, aren't they always? So we've got uh, Donald Trump here. And what I want to talk about, the main thing is I want to talk about what is his next move going to be? Donald Trump has got a lot of options. He's got a lot of judgments against him financially. And what are the likely options that he has? And what what is he going to do? What what do you think he's going to do? And I want to, I've got some good input on that answer that I want to talk to you about. But before we go there, I've got Nikki Haley. I've got to show you this, folks. So Nikki Haley had this announcement that's been brewing, right? She's she's had this big announcement that uh, her camp has been talking about. Well, she came out this morning and she actually said that she's staying in the race. But she said some other things that are pretty interesting that I want you to hear. So have a listen to Nikki Haley, folks. Of course, many of the same politicians who now publicly embrace Trump privately dread him. They know what a disaster he's been and will continue to be for our party. They're just too afraid to say it out loud. Hmm. Well, I'm not afraid to say the hard truths out loud. Hmm. I feel no need to kiss the ring. I have no fear of Trump's retribution. I'm not... I'm not looking for anything from him. My own political future is of zero concern. So I hear what the political class says, but I hear from the American people too. And folks, I just want to point out that Nikki Haley is the future, I think, of the Republican Party. This this is where the party is going. And if it were not for Donald Trump, this is where it would be right now. And it's interesting, I think, as a as a correlation to what she said, that the Republican Party has been living in this bubble, this fear of retribution from Donald Trump. That's where we are. You know, the Tommy Tubervilles, the Mike Johnsons, the list goes on and on. Lindsey Graham, you know, if I <laughs> could bring that one up. But they're all living in this fear of retribution for Donald Trump. And and that fear of retribution didn't help them win the last election, did it? I mean, it's, a, it's an insane, it's an insane premise that Donald Trump is the, the truth, the way, and the life, to put it that way. He's almost a god to these people. I mean, it's insane. He lost the last election. Of course, you know, to get out of that, they, they you know, they believe that it was uh, rigged, naturally. So here's what I want to show you, folks. Take a look at this article. So this article is by David K. Johnston, and it came out yesterday. And the premise of this article is Trump's next legal move, personal bankruptcy. And I know a lot of people are saying, well, why doesn't he just file corporate bankruptcy? Because he's the sole owner, and it all leads back to him. But David K. Johnston did some um, interesting analysis on this, and he pointed out that conspiracy theorist Alex Jones did it two years ago. Rudolph Giuliani did it just before Christmas. Now there's a very good chance that before March 12th, Donald Trump will join them in filing personal bankruptcy. Trump would do so for the same reason as Jones and Giuliani, to delay paying court-ordered awards for defamation. Now, Trump has never filed personal bankruptcy. He goes on to say, as I will show below, doing so now might seem at first blush to ruin his brand, his polished image as a multi-billionaire, a modern Midas who turns to gold all that he touches. But of course, he'll spin this to his advantage, he says, and that would be easy. Trump will tell his cultish believers that he's as rich as ever, but he was forced to seek refuge in bankruptcy court by the Marxist, fascist, corrupt, deep state, liberal, radical cabal he blames for all his legal woes. So where did he get the date of March 12th that he's saying? He's going to say something before then. Well, that date matters because that is the deadline for Trump to appeal the $83.3 million a jury awarded to advice columnist E. Jean Carroll for defaming her after a federal court jury awarded $5 million 
for earlier defamation. Court rules require that as a condition of appealing, Trump, like all other litigants, must show that he has the money to pay the jury's award. And he goes on to say that these these are some of the options that Trump has got. He's, he can pay, of course, he can pay the Carroll Award, which everybody thinks is not going to happen. He can post the $83.3 million in cash with the federal court so that he can appeal. He can obtain a bond guaranteeing payment of the award, which assumes that Trump can find a lender fool enough, foolish enough to extend Trump credit. So he goes on to say that he questions, David Kay, the author of this article, questions whether Trump has the capacity to either deposit that much money with the court or obtain a bond that will cover the entire amount should Trump prove unable to do so. After all, how many actual billionaires hawk $399 gold sneakers and $99 bottle perfume? But the Carol Award, he goes on to say, is not his only problem. On Friday, Trump was awarded or ordered to disgorge ill-gotten gains from persistent business fraud. With interest, he owes more than $450 million. So the whole idea behind this, this whole thing about bankruptcy is that he can stop the clock on both awards. That means he won't need to deposit the cash or get bonds to appeal the Carroll and New York State Civil Fraud Awards. The automatic state of these and other civil proceedings would benefit Trump by getting past what he sees as the finish line, the November 5th presidential election. So by declaring bankruptcy, he, he can, of course, spin it, and it pushes all of this past the November 5th election. That's why there's probably, probably a 99.9% chance that he's going to come out sometime between now and March 12th and plead that he has to declare bankruptcy. Now, when you look at Alex Jones, this actually won him two extra years. He still hasn't paid. He's been ordered by a judge, uh, but he has yet to pay any of the $1.5 billion jury award for defaming the parents and relatives of the Sandy Hook massacre, as tragic as that was. And what a buffoon Alex Jones was in that situation. But Donald Trump is, is more than likely to do this, folks. But, you know, everybody feels on the MAGA side, Everybody feels so bad for Donald Trump. He's the victim. Donald Trump is excellent, excellent at playing the victim. That's his go-to card. And when he declares bankruptcy, that's probably what he's going to do, is play the victim through the whole thing. But I want to play you this. So don't feel too bad, MAGA folks, for Donald Trump when he plays the victim because of this. Have a listen to this. Is there any good financial news for Trump? Yeah, so very interesting. And Audie, in fact, was the one who pointed this out to me. Trump's true social share worth. So back in 2022, it was about 700 million. Last year, it was less than 100 million. But there's this idea, essentially, that Truth Social will, in fact, be able to go public. And how much would Trump's shares be worth if it does, in fact, go public? It could be upwards of $4 billion. That's billion with a B, not million with an M. Now, of course, keep in mind that Trump can't sell these stocks for another six months. But the fact is, we've had all this bad news for Trump. This could be good financial news for Donald Trump. Insane, folks. Insane. But one of the things about Truth Social is this. I, I read through this article that I want to show you real quick. Look at this. So in this article, this is from searchlogistics.com, and it goes on to say that the 65-plus age group doesn't use True Social, probably never will. That's no big surprise. But what's interesting here, folks, is that 50% of the 18- to 34-age demographic said they don't expect to use the platform. Only 7% of people aged 18-34 to 34 said they plan to use Truth Social often. 7%. I mean, these, these are the, the folks that are going to push this forward if the thing has got any chance of profitability long term. Why is this such a big deal? Because 18 to 34, the article says, is usually the demographic with the highest social media adoption and the stats show that most aren't interested in truth social. So folks, when he comes back out and he plays the victim, uh, you know, and, he, and he's looking for sympathy, he's looking for money for this, that, for that GoFundMe campaign that that billionaire Grant Cardone's wife is running that's only raised $479,000. When he's, when he's asking for all this money, just don't forget, folks, that he's got 
four billion sitting there. Now the problem is he can't use that for six months. So boo hoo, Donald Trump. <laughs>